Hello, my name is Bob Obi. Um, I'm one of the authors of Wonder Club for the third year. And um, today I'm hoping to present to you the, the whole course, the whole package, um, everything that teachers will receive and everything that the book focuses on and its basic pedagogy. Um, I hope that you find that um, Wonder Club 3 is a fantastic book, a fantastic inclusive book for, for children of different abilities that have been exposed to different amounts of English. And I also hope that you find Wonder Club a really complete resource for you as teachers to use with the third annual. Okay, so here's basically what's in the pupils book. Um, its main features are that it's um, approved and certified by the Ministry of Education. It basically addresses children that have a, a skill level of, of A1 in the CFR. So they're, they're within that, that larger group, they're working towards A1 or they're, they're starting to, to reach the A1 level. It's based on a CLIL approach, which means content um, language integrated learning. So basically it, it's a cross curricular. It looks at other subjects like science and geography and art, that the, the children will be learning in their, their wider primary um, school environment. Um, it integrates PASIO, the student profile, which you're all familiar with. It fully meets the essential learning objectives, um, which again, you're all fully familiar with. And throughout the book, it's 21st century skills in orientation, looking at skills for life, uh, skills for learning, um, critical thinking skills, developing slightly higher order thinking and questioning skills. The thematic content, basically, there is um, a let's start module, and then there's six main modules, which cover the themes of shapes all around you, my school day, growing up, pretty animals, let's play, so recreation, free time, and the weather. Um, for each module, there's a video starter and there's also a wonder box which stimulates curiosity. So a basic question or, or fact or figure is thrown out and um, the children are asked to consider this. Um, you also have um, uh, vocabulary. Um, starters um, are presented and hang on just got to take my screen down um, critical thinking task pair work activities integrated skills activities and the main vocabulary presented um, through images and through audio and we'll talk a little bit more about audio later the key features of audio within the book Okay. Um, also within each module, there are engaging, easy to follow sing along songs. So there's different ways in which you can access the songs. You can access them with text, you can access them without text, you can access them and sing along as the button moves um, across the text. Um, another key feature is that we have a comic strip based on simple dialogues. And there's basic characters who appear in this comic strip across the course. Um, one of these is this little guy in the corner who's called Rolo. And we'll be learning a lot about him um, as we go through today. The comic strip is based on simple dialogues. And um, at the end of this section, there's always something to do with motor skills where the children are actually developing uh, a kind of motor skill, a handling, a making skill within um, the framework of this lesson. Okay, there are value sections throughout the book. Um, and all modules include a theme related project. Um, 
this is really important. It will be um, a project that is promoting cross-curricular skills. So here, this one is to do with uh, science theme and animals. Um, uh, it will revisit, so the project will revisit and revise language that's previously taught in other sections. And it aims to stimulate critical thinking again. So again, the, the kind of CLIL, the cross-curricular based approach, you can see moves across different sections of the course. And there's always an opportunity for children to show and tell the work that they've made um, as a result of their project and to talk about it, present it to the class. Um, another thing that we have as a key feature in the book is that we have activities that encourage students to develop um, awareness of the sound and the shape of letters, um, and then to recognize them within words. Now, English is not a phonetic alphabet language. So these correspondences between letters and sounds and groups of letters and sounds is, is tricky for children, but we have it really covered in this book. We have very many different approaches and ways into looking, dealing with, handling letters. Um, we also have um, a section um, in each of these sections, which looks at sight words, which help children improve, improve their reading fluency. If you're not familiar with the concept of sight words, basically, um, this statistic should convince you of their importance. Uh, in, in the English language, um, everything that you read, so when whatever book you pick up, uh, even if you stacked up 20 books, 25% of that total of book that you have in your hands um, involves just 12 words in English. I mean, you can imagine what they are. They're words like the, a, there, is, etc. But just think about that. 25% of everything you read in English is made up of just 12 words. 50% of everything you read in English is made up of just 100 words. And 75% of everything you read in English is made up of just 300 words. Now, getting students to memorize and be able to visualize and see those words, those essential words, those essential sight words in English is really, really important, especially as they're words which are not always phonetically regular. So if you think about um, questions like WH questions or why, WHY, these are not phonetically regular for children. So they need to approach them in a different way and memorize them so they can visualize them and recognize them when they see them. Okay, moving on. Um, we have uh, lessons which are exclusively dedicated to the idea of CLIL as well. So where the focus in the lesson is more on, on content, things that children are um, expected to know and learn and skills that they're expected to know in their other subjects. So here we make the link with something that's in the, the third annual science um, curriculum. We make the link between living and non-living things. Okay. Um, we look at this um, in a creative, um, fun kind of way. There are, there are games that are involved in this. Um, and it's content-based content learning that lends itself as well to further project work, optional project work, if um, you want to do more projects with children. Each module will have a checkpoint allowing for consolidation of language. Um, and at the end of the checkpoint, children are always asked to reflect on, um, through self-assessment uh, tasks, on 
how they've done throughout the unit. Uh, this promotes the idea of learner autonomy, uh, absolute key skill. Each, um, well, within um, the two halves of the book, there's an instalment of wonder tales. Um, these are moral based stories that give children the chance to do a little bit more reading and following of narrative and engaging with narrative and story type language. Um, these stories are always explicitly based and focused through a moral. And so again, that's fully covering and addressing things like um, the Pasio uh, uh, profile. Um, another section that you have um, after two or three modules is a section called um, World of Wonder. And these sections stimulate curiosity and promote awareness of people in other countries, people that live differently to you, other lives and places. Okay. These sections will also involve activities that help to develop di digital literacy and citizenship. Um, so little research activities that um, allow the children to engage with what they've learned about these people in other places. Um, there's features like special day activities, um, and I'll tell you where you, you find these a little bit later, but basically the, the principal um, key activities across the school year um, are resourced so that you can pull these activities out of a file and the students can work with these on, on or leading up to the special days. There are sections for consolidating grammar if needed. So these are found um, at the back of the book. They're not uh, an integral part of the unit, but should you as a teacher feel that you want to add a little bit more grammar, you want to base um, lessons or part of lessons a little bit around the grammar focus, then these resources are there for you. Um, there's lots of craft work opportunities and the craft work is always supported by things that the children cut out, stick together, follow the instructions, make um, and colour. So you basically have these basic stencils or basic um, jigsaw, craft jigsaws that you cut out and put together to make um, the craft image. Um, there are stickers. Uh, stickers um, which uh, you can use in all sorts of ways and then there are the particular reward stickers as well that we'll be looking at later when we come to assessment so let's just consider um, what what components you have as a teacher and there are many so you have a teacher's book and you have a teacher's activity book for the activity book. You also have a teacher's guide. I'll be explaining the difference between these three, but it's important to understand that there are th three different things and that you will use them in various ways. Maybe one in class, maybe have one at home um, so you don't have to take it to school. But we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. You also have Rolo, the hand puppet. Um, Rolo's place in the book is he is part of the serialized stories. Um, but there's also a, a very unique augmented reality downloadable app that involves Rolo too. And again, I'll be telling you more, more about that. Um, Rolo is a kind of uh, flying robot who's always around the family and is always um, asking funny things, doing funny things. Um, uh, basically, a very amusing character throughout the serializations. You have finger puppets. 
So finger puppets for Rolo and all the characters in the book. Again, we'll look at those in a little bit more detail in a minute. Okay, you have correction stamps, um, which I'm sure you're familiar with using. You have a huge sticker book, um, 560 stickers, I think there are all together. You have classroom posters. Now these are huge. These are a real plus. Um, and we'll look at those in more detail in a minute. You have boxes of flashcards, um, which are really useful, obviously, for eliciting and practicing vocabulary and spelling. You have bingo games, and we'll look at those in some detail as well. Um, very inclusive, different types of cards that the children can use. Uh, some picture-based, some not picture-based. You have big storybooks. So there are, there are two of those, which uh, include a number of different tales. You have the augmented reality app, which um, I'll talk about when we, we come to it. And then you have your pen drive. Um, and we'll look at what's exactly contained on your pen drive. Okay, so your teacher's book. Now, this is um, structured in such a way that it basically contains the, um, the student's book within it. And down the side in columns, you have all these little prompts and guides which tell you about what's supporting you in delivering the lesson. So it will remind you of what the essential learning points are. It will remind you of the elements of PASIO that are being focused on. There'll be a video icon to remind you that there's a video with some details about the video. There'll be um, a suggested answer to the wonder box, the opening question, the opening critical thinking question that you pose to children. There are suggested answers and answer keys um, for the, the more type of um, closed type of exercises. And there are, um, there's audio material um, and for everything, this is at two speeds. So you can play it at a slightly slower speed, or you can play it at a speed approaching something more like normal, normal delivery. Um, obviously, uh, the choice is yours. The choice is yours to use uh, one day at the slower speed, uh, second time at a more natural speed. Um, all these things are down to you as the teacher but you have these options in your hand. Um, you are reminded of the materials that you need for the lesson. And as, as we go through this presentation, you'll, you'll see literally how many different types of resource you can draw down on within this course. So that's a very useful little box, just reminding you, ah, don't forget the puppets, uh, don't forget the flashcards. Don't forget your pen drive because you need it to put the interactive um, ebook on the on the board. Um, now, your teacher's guide, which we'll come to in a minute, is basically a teacher's book that really talks about the different backgrounds to the tasks, um, gives you answers, talks about different ways to work through each of the tasks, um, but it also has sections in it that remind you that you can reinforce the learning here by doing something else, different ways to reinforce what's on the page here. So um, again, that little icon there, that little um, column there in, at the side of the book will remind you to look in your teacher's guide to see that there are other things that you can do at this point. There are suggestions for homework. And we'll talk about where you get the homework for uh, or from in a, in a minute. 
and then there are there's a reference to the resources that are in your Sala Digital, which is a, a massive feature of this book. And again, we'll be coming to that. Okay. So the teacher's activity book is basically um, a book that talks about the things that are in the activity book. Um, and it includes a picture dictionary, reinforcement activities, answers, board games, skills time activities, sounds and words backup, and clear focused activities. There's an answer key in your version of the book. And there's an audio icon to remind you that there's audio material that goes with what's on the page. Okay, then in your teacher's guide, which is the bigger, heavier book, which is probably the one that you won't want to bring to class so much to carry around with you, there's a um, step-by-step step -by -step guide for the teacher to get the most out of the lessons, different ways of exploiting material. And this includes answer suggestions, solutions, samples of craft work and project work that children have done. Um, the learning objectives, talking about the different learning objectives, the uh, guide to the paseo, resources needed for the class, key icons that are used in the course, so it explains those, and of course your audio and your video scripts, so that you can look at those in advance and think about, ah, here are some words I might like to put up on the board before we do the task. Here are some key words that I might like to think about using. Okay, um, it includes suggestions for how to make the exercises more inclusive. So by inclusive, we mean so that children of different levels can fully participate. So children who may have had a year of English before coming to Tweeto Ano, you know, they might be slightly more advanced than children who have had no English before coming to Tweeto Ano. So it, it gives lots of ideas about how you can modify tasks to include all of the children. Okay. And then you have Rolo the puppet for a far more interactive class. So wherever Rolo is um, engaged in the course, in the, the serializations, in the stories, in giving instructions and things, you can bring Rolo in and use him. You have 13 finger puppets, so all the key characters that come up in the story you can have in your hand or put into children's hands. Okay, and here are your correction stamps. And here are reward stickers. So as well as your other stickers, your, your, your general stickers, that you can use in different ways. You have 560 reward stickers, um, which say things like, well done, excellent, almost there. Okay, and then you have 17 classroom posters um, like this, which are in A2 format. So that's really, really huge, yeah? great big posters um, that you can put around the classroom and integrate and use in your lessons. So this one is on classroom language, classroom instructions, um, children asking questions. Okay. And then you have flashcards. Picture flashcards, word cards, and sight word cards. So the sight word cards that uh, are covered across the course. And um, there are all sorts of activities that we propose um, that you do with those, those tasks, hiding them, revealing them, so that the children actually 
memorize and visualize those words um, without having to break them down phonetically. Okay, now this is a lovely feature of the course. Um, it's um, a bingo, bingo game, and there is a set of bingo cards for each module. Um, now, what makes these, this resource so lovely and inclusive is that you have three different types of card. So you have the cards with words and pictures for children who are kind of mid middling, you know, they're, they're, they're quite good, but they're not, they, they don't know all the words, for example, they wouldn't recognize all the words written down, perhaps. You have um, eight cards for children just with pictures. So here those children will be focusing on hearing a word, listening to the word and um, getting the right picture. And then you have those that are just with words for the children who are more comfortable with, with reading, um, perhaps seeing more English. And so you can play the game and the winner can be the child that comes from any of these, any of these groups. So it makes the, the whole learning activity really inclusive and open to the children of all levels. Okay, the whole cast participates. You have these really big storybooks. There are two of them. And within each um, book, there are like eight tales. So eight different adventures happen within, within each storybook. Again, it's, it's up to you how you in integrate these, but these are big books. So you can hold them, you can have the children sat on the floor on a mat around you. You can use them in, in for that kind of um, reading and interactive work. Okay, and then you also have um, this app, which is compatible with all sorts of devices, with phones and with tablets. Um, and basically what you do is wherever um, you hold the phone over the book, Rolo comes up on the screen and engages with the material that's on the page. So the children just get the app and then when they hold their phone or their tablet over the page in the book, Rolo appears and he starts to talking, talking to them about what's in the book. So he says, Hey guys, let's look at these words. And as the children move their phone, Rolo's talking to them about the words and saying the words. Okay. There's also um, opportunities with in the um, the app for the children to modify the look of Rolo, so they can make him slightly different colours, make him slightly bigger or smaller. Um, basically, do put different bits of clothing, different things on him. Okay. So there's that option as well within the app for them to personalize Rolo. But this is a beautiful thing and it actually makes it um, quite accessible for parents as well to do a little bit of interactive stuff at home with the children with the app, holding it over the book and engaging with, with the material in the pictures. Do, do check that out, it's a beautiful, beautiful feature, a unique feature to this course. Okay, and then you have your magic um, pen drive. So this includes the all the audio content and also the teacher's interactive ebook. Um, so the book where you project the book onto a space, onto a whiteboard normally, and you have all the content that's in the book that you can now start to play with. Um, you can use a pointer. The children can use a pointer um, with their, their lovely ebook. Um, we called this your TBF, the teacher's best friend, because we think this little um, data stick will be absolutely crucial to you um, in delivering the course as it should be delivered. Um, here's what you can put on the board. Um, your ebook um, basically 
can be just um, put in and used with the stick onto your computer. There's no, um, it's completely offline. So there's no chance of the internet going down or anything. It's, it's on, your con, on your device, put onto the, projected onto the board. There's no login and there's no installation. So it really is um, something that's really easy for you to use. Um, it's got all of the year three content on it. Um, it's got all of the songs and the audios and the videos. So everything is in one place for you to use and project. Um, it's got all the supplementary material that you can just get into. Um, it's got word lists, it's got the activity book, and it's got the bingo games if you want to play them in this way. Um, that's why we call it your, your TBF, your, your teacher's best friend for this course. And um, if you apply to us, uh, if you lose it, for example, or it's damaged or something, you apply to us, we, we can supply you with a new one, um, you know, within, within a year, you know, for, for the next year or whatever. Okay, now, the Sala Digital, the platform. Um, this is uh, a basic learning platform, an interactive learning platform for you as the teacher, which gives you access to all of the songs and videos and the teacher's interactive book, but also planning, extra worksheets and assessment documents a Wito Maish she. No, did I get it right? Probably not, but I try. Um, okay, so planning. So it has five different types of plan for you your annual plan, your semester plan, your quarterly plan, module plans, and lesson plans. Okay, so these are um, plans that you can submit that will save you time um, for submitting to uh, school authorities showing you showing them what you are teaching each week um, each month what the goals are for for each semester okay so you have every type of plan at every level of the book um, that you need it's editable so if for some reason you want to do a little bit more work on say a particular festival or festive time or something like that it's completely editable so you can make this these plans your own um, insert anything or delete anything that you you want to customize them basically okay we have um, extra extra worksheets extra tasks um, which is um, suggested reinforcement for different things um, and we have these in three different levels so again this can make them um, usable with the whole class but in different ways to include everyone uh, within within the group The assessment resource within this book is absolutely fantastic. It's very full, it's very variable, and there are some super features, again, which are editable. So I'll, let, me, let me talk you through some of these things. Um, you've got many different types of assessment here relating to um, the key distinction between formative assessment, summative assessments, and possibly end of year type exit assessments. And you've also got diagnostic assessments here. Um, so we're gonna look at all of them and, and talk about each one. Okay, you've, in terms of formative assessment, what you've basically got is you've got, um, we provide you with suggestions of where there is a formative assessment opportunity within the book and how you would go about assessing that particular activity or point 
that um, you, you, you want to assess within the book formatively. We also provide you with rubrics relating to the performance of that task. So you have rubrics that you can use to assess that task um, in terms of different levels, like one to five, like how well did the child do in working with that task? If it was a speaking task, were they able to produce um, accurate um, examples? Were they able to introduce accurate or um, were they able to respond promptly when, when they were asked to do something? You've got all the different rubrics that you would need to use um, to assess those particular tasks within the book. Again, it's editable. You've got diagnostic tests. Um, you might choose to use these when children arrive at the school for the first time. You might want to use some of these to see how much English children have had before you start the class with them. Okay. So diagnostic tests that you can use in lots of ways. Again, they're editable. You've got quizzes that we provide for every type of uh, section of the book. So for the end of um, every module, every term, every double page spread, you've got, you've got quizzes. And these are all stored in the Sala Digital. Okay. And you have the, the rubrics grids, as I've said, and you've got places to record um, the performance, the results of the children. So everything is, is laid out for you. Okay. And here are the rubrics that I was talking about. So for any task, whether it's um, written, reading, speaking, um, You've got it here, the rubrics that you draw down, use to assess that task. And then ultimately what you can do with these rubrics is you can start to um, describe children in their performance reviews using these rubrics. So you can put this in their report cards when you have to make reports, these uh, rubrics based on real assessment of formative tasks can start to inform that type of activity. Again, it's all editable. Okay, and then here are the three different levels of, of test. This would be more the uh, extended type of, of test. Again, it's all edible. So if you have um, an idea for a task that you want to include, you just take some of these out. If there was perhaps um, a part of a module that you did not cover, um, you would modify these tests and put in things that you did cover or you did spend more time focusing on. That's the reason that it's all there to be uh, in an editable format for you. Okay, there again are your rubrics. Okay. Different examples of the tests that you have. Okay. There are self-assessment, um, again, editable. Uh, sheets for the children so they can think about how well that they've done. You can extend these or you can make take a, a box out again, depending on what you have been working on mainly during your period of work. Okay, now the young learners tests are popular uh, in some parts of the country uh, with some teachers, with some schools. Um, so we actually give you an assessment option of using uh, young learner, Cambridge Young Learner assessment materials, should you want to, okay? This can perhaps be motivating for the children to see what their, their level is, their standard is in terms of these tests, 
or you may just choose not to use them but to use the other testing material of which there's a huge amount in the book but i thought i'd just show you that um, these tests in the cambridge format for all the skills the reading and writing the listening and the speaking papers they are all here um, relating to the words and focuses that we've had in our modules in Wonder Club Third Annual. Okay, you've got guides to the speaking answer keys. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit more now about the Sala Digital. And this is your basic teaching platform your as a both a, as a teacher and as if you like an administrator um, it helps you log all of the information all of the data um, all of the tests all the results all of the reports all of the extra tasks the homework it's it's your way of managing your your whole learning experience um, so all you have to do is create your your classes within the folder and basically you can add a student to your class at any time of the year. It helps you communicate with your students via um, a secure chat. Um, you will find this really a, such a useful tool for should you need to work with a distance, at distance with, with children, um, for getting tasks to children, who might be might be ill and have a time uh, period of time away from school um, it, it, it's it's a beautiful resource for you um, you can see here the history of all the assignments and tests that um, you have submitted and which students um, have completed those assignments so if you set something on Thursday and you expect it to come back to you on Monday you can see just how many and which ones have actually done the assignment. So many ways you can use this. Okay, you can send um, exercises, including interactive exercises to the children. So these can be exercises where, you know, if it's a, an ABCD type task, multiple choice, um, they can actually do the work themselves and it can be corrected um, within this platform for them. So self-access work. Okay, you can choose to send them extra resources that are available within the resources bank. It's gonna be all types of things, all types of more songs, videos, um, uh, small texts, anything, things that you've put there yourself, things that you've developed to yourself, anything that is within the resources bank that we give you um, and files that you've made that you want to share with the students and more open-ended questions. So if you want to um, set a little writing task or you want the children to, to write a little Christmas message or something like that, they can then um, do that writing and send it back to you to be assessed. So it's a kind of channel that you can use um, to set tasks, more open-ended tasks in that way. Okay. And it also provides you with a way of sharing links, links to sites that are safe for children to go to um, where they can do a little bit of research or um, enjoy more, more songs and singing or more craft activities. So you can, you can basically share anything that you want through this platform with children in a very structured way. Okay, you can export your students' test scores and assignments to an Excel file that you can then upload to the school administrative file. So it, it gives you um, a, a great way of just uploading administratively the things that um, are done in your format on your solid digital to the school administrative platform. Okay, um, beauty of this is 
that you can share um, all of this information, all of these things that we've looked at, the videos, the um, interactive materials, the, um, uh, the music files, uh, the stories, any of the, the books, whatever's in the book, you can share this in external programs like Moodle, Microsoft Teams, uh, Google Classroom. Okay, so all of this can, can go to those systems if you are using them um, in a more uh, distance or hybrid learning situation. Um, literally hundreds of, of bits of material are available through this platform to you, your resource bank, PowerPoints, videos, games, all sorts of things. Okay, um, you can create tests within it. Um, you can choose the templates of the tests that you want, um, and you can choose them with autocorrection or not. But obviously, not autocorrection for the more open-ended questions like little writing assignments. Um, but basically, the other um, more straightforward test, you can choose the type of format that you want the test to be in. So it could be multiple choice, it could be true, false, it could be a matching exercise, multiple matching, pair bonding, um, all those different types of tasks. You choose the test, you create the tests, you store them here, you send them to the children. Okay. So this is um, basically our offer um, to you. It's the pupils book, the augmented reality app, um, the um, digital license platform. Um, and you've seen what a fantastic tool that is, both in terms of supporting the children that, um, that you communicate with them, uh, more homework, more exercises, they send things back to you. You can organize chat. It, that program can be linked to the, all of the, the Googles and the, and the team platforms for delivering lessons. Um, and our offer is also the activity book. Um, now I can, um, I can finish there and I can take some questions. I know that Sergio and the team have been dealing with questions in the chat room, um, but I will stop sharing there. And should you have um, any questions or any things that you would like to ask, um, I'm happy to, to deal with them. Okay, I would warn you, even though that you heard my excellent Portuguese um, when I, I delivered that, that, those words, um, which were in English and much more, that I do not speak a word of Portuguese. So if you want us, um, or want me to respond to something, probably best that it's in English or, or um, possibly French, possibly German, possibly Greek, but not, not Portuguese, I'm afraid. Um, lots of you are looking for um, asking about um, songs and videos. Um, the songs are absolutely sensational, if I say so myself. The production on the songs is, is just beautiful. Um, so if you will, you will be sent um, things that you can, you can see and listen to as you're making your decisions about this book. But I really recommend that you go straight to the songs because they are, they are fantastic. They're one of my favorite parts of this resource. Okay, that's a very nice comment there from Marta, um, saying that she loves smiles and she really wants to um, look at this, this book too. The, the, the guys on the team, they'll be telling you exactly how you will access um, all your samples and um, what will be given what will be given to you to, to consult as you move forward and make um, your decision. Um, 
but I, I think you can see that there's an awful lot to to consider here. There's an there's an awful lot to dig into, um, really explore what you can do with uh, Sala Digital. Um, really look at this this idea of like the the different different levels of material for different levels of children that allows you still to do the same lesson, but each of the children are looking at a, a slightly different material, even though it leads to the same kind of feedback, they're accessing the material in a different way. Some with words and pictures, some with just words, and some with just pictures. Can you sing a song? Can I share a song? Now, I'm not gonna sing a song, um, that will turn you all off, but um, you can definitely um, dig into the resource that we're going to send you. Does the book have intercultural activities? Okay, I saw that yet. Yeah. Yes, it does. Those are the activities that I described as the page where um, the children look at people from other cultures, other places, um, other that live other types of life. Yeah, you saw the example that I showed and the PowerPoint of. Um, children in India and the what it means for them to um, cover cover themselves in different colored colored powders and paints um, that's that's our intercultural section Rolo is nice Rolo is is a lovely thing and the children um, that I've seen use the uh, interactive um, app the augmented reality app absolutely adore um adore that as a feature it's such a way of giving them control um of, of of the material that you put before them allowing them to go back over to it um being in control of what they what they listen to and how they interact with the book really really beautiful feature sort of i suppose the best way i can describe that augmented reality app is it's not just interactive and, and fully engrossing but it, um, it allows the children to make the material their own because they, 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 they pace themselves through it and they've got a little friend that's guiding them through the material. It's a beautiful feature. Um, the questions are coming thick and fast. Um, let me see if I can latch onto something. Will the presentation be available later? Yeah, I, I have absolutely no problem with um, this presentation being shared. Um, so that's, um, that's something that you can contact the team about and how they can get that to you. Um, yeah, I think there was, there was a, a question there about, will it, will it help the um, uh, children from immigrant backgrounds who, who come uh, yeah. Well, all I can say is that the um, if you have children coming who are have missed maybe part of their their education or haven't been exposed as much to English, that's why we have all of the inclusive material. That's why we have the material that enables children maybe to come to class and words don't necessarily need to be a barrier to them because they can be included in the book by looking at the the pictures and doing the tasks with with just the pictures um I, yes i i i there will be a there will be a fourth grade um obviously that will need to go through all the processes of of editing and approval and everything but yes the plan is for a fourth grade the first and second grade I think you'll have to consult the the team about because that's not something that I've actually personally as it, as an author been involved in. But um, for for this uh, this little series of um, Wonder Club, yeah, the plan is for a third grade and a fourth grade. Okay, so we're we're kind of at the end of our time. So um, I will I will sign off, and I really hope to meet you in in person um if you take the book and you're we're doing events and it would be lovely to meet you all 
and um, like I say, just just take your time to to look at this course because um, there's so much to it, so much behind it, and so much that will make your life easy and so many things that you can control without having to start from scratch. You can make uh, wonderful worksheets yourself just by adapting some of the ones that are there, wonderful tests yourself just by adapting some of the things there. You can make lovely interactive exercises to do with the children, again, just by adapting some of the templates that are there. And it gives you this platform of, sh of doing all your important administrative tasks, all of your tasks to do with um, your planning and your feedback to um, the school administrative system in terms of the results and um, test results and reports. Um, it's, all, it's all there um, made, wouldn't say simple for you, but made really straightforward. You know, nothing simple in teaching. There's lots of effort that you have to put in, but it's, it's, it's a system that you can use to save you time, okay? Um, and the, the quality of the, the serializations and the stories, the visuals, the songs and everything is, is absolutely first rate um, and beautiful job was done by production. And so I hope you enjoy a few years. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, hope to see you soon.